today's speaker, who is one of our own, um, Emeritus Professor William P. Malm. Some of you may know his name already, not only from his scholarship, but also as the person behind the William P. Malm Award for Outstanding Student Writing in Japanese Studies, um, which is something that we will be awarding later this academic year. Professor Malm joined the faculty of the School of Music here at University of Michigan in 1960. While there, he established an ethnomusicology program complete with a Javanese gamelan orchestra on the fourth floor of Burton Tower. And there was also a Japanese tatami room on the eighth. And I don't know if the import of this sinks in, but I have come here well after this has not, unfortunately, been here. And still, people tell me, oh, but did you know Professor Mom had a gamelan orchestra here and Japanese music? And so that's actually a really important, I think, gift and lasting legacy here at the University of Michigan. He has received numerous awards and honors. This sheaf of papers is his CV. Um, he was awarded, in terms of recent awards, he was awarded the Fumio Koizumi Prize for Ethnomusicology in 1993, and he gave the 2001 Charles Seeger Lecture at the Society of Ethnomusicology Convention. Professor Mom's primary area of research, and if you had seen his lengthy CV, you would know that this is by no means his only area of interest, but his primary area of research is shamisen music, particularly that of the Japanese Kabuki and Bundaku Theater. His monograph, Japanese Music and Musical Instruments, which first came out in 1959, is the first scholarly and comprehensive survey of its subject in English, and it stayed in print until last year, yeah. which is kind of amazing, I mean, not just kind of, which is amazing. For those of us producing books, it's a very daunting example to live up to. His book, on Nagauta, which grew out of his doctoral dissertation, is one of the first detailed English language studies of a particular genre of Japanese music. And his, these books and others have been translated into both Japanese and Spanish, attesting to the truly global impact of his work. Today, he will be speaking to us about magic numbers in Shinto rituals and music. So please join me in welcoming Professor Malm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great pleasure to be here. But I joined, as you say, in 1960, I came here and I joined the Center for Japanese Studies. At that time, all the men who founded it were here. Of course, all of them now are gone. But over the last 58 years, I've enjoyed support from the Center for Japanese Studies. Through them, I could buy instruments, or bring in jam, uh, shamisen teachers or drum teachers. I, I was grateful for that. And they also published two of my seven books. One of them, yeah, two of them, oh, no, one of them, sorry. <laughs> you couldn't find your book. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. No, you don't have it there. Well, that's the one, yeah. Uh, during the 1990s, I followed the usual educational trend to make videotapes. So, I made seven on Japanese music. And they, they are available at the School of Music Library. But the, the topic today is from a, based on a, uh, my videotape, Shinto Festival Music. It was shot in 1993 and produced in 1994. Now, the topic, as I say, is magic numbers. They're common all over the world. It, like a, there are all kinds of things. There are vortex series. All, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where you go in the world. They got numbers and magic numbers. And my interest, obviously, is Japanese traditions. That is Shichiko san. Seven, five, three is the topic. Perhaps the, the seven lucky Shinto gods will help me do it. We'll see. Of course, we know historically that this thing is a big part of Japan. And all I did, I know, you read the Genji, the, all kinds of things about th going in the right directions, being in the right place. I've had, I've had a personal, person, uh, personal friends in Japan who couldn't see me that day because they couldn't go in that direction. So all these big things are deep in Japanese traditions. It looks all modern, but in the bottom. And if you go to stores, you go to the top of Miskoshi or any place, up at the top, there's a Shinto shrine or a Kamidana, a place with a little small Shinto shrine. 
That's true in any good liquor store, any good almost any store. Of course, plus the plus the, the, uh, the, the well, welcome in the cat, but that's a different thing. But I want to talk about Chichiko san. And to do that, I, I, it's very interesting. I, one of the tapes I made is say was on Shinto. So the logical thing to do with the crew, oh, but by the way, the, the, uh, I, didn't, I didn't shoot it. I, was, I, wrote, I only wrote the script. It was being shot by a man from Oklahoma, actually. Who, uh, so I did Japanese, and he did film. Uh, but we went, naturally, if you could do a thing on Shinto, you could begin a film, you got to go to Meiji Shrine, right? So we went to Meiji Shrine, and totally by accident, this happened. Child blessings or weddings. Here a child is about to be blessed at the Meiji Shrine. A giant drum, the old Daiko, calls the gods to attention. the family with a Shinto wand, festooned with paper that represents ancient strips of mulberry leaves. A Miko priestess shakes a tree of bells called the Suzu three times for good luck. before their private shrine. This ceremony is not Kagura. It is more like the American Thanksgiving Day, an important symbol of national, family, and local togetherness. Okay. Seven, three, five. And they're all there. Absolutely free, by the way. I was only, we were in the temple, and totally by accident. It happened. But other things happened, which are also interesting. Let me go on to talk about uh, the shrine. Uh, uh, I, I, the next part of this film is primarily uh, in a the Shinto uh, shrine next to the uh, Soji temple in, in Asakusa. And that's, which is Buddhist. And almost every Buddhist temple has a Shinto shrine nearby. It's called Binsasa. Now this. In the Shinto shrine on that day of the festival, they first do a special, some special, special ceremonies. And this is an example. The Binsasa is an instrument. This is being done in the Shinto shrine. Good luck. It's there. It's tradition. 
And now, in, in, in this particular festival, of course, the very part of festivals, the big annual festivals, like this, this, this uh, San Juan City, uh, is this. Each word near the major shrine has its own omikoshi. The portable shrines are elaborately made with phoenix birds on top to flap their wings as they bounce in procession. Shrines blessed by a Shinto priest. When the shrines occurred on a route through the Asakusa compound of the streets of their own district, spreading good fortune and collecting annual pledges along the way. Shrine carriers for the giant Omikoshi must use ward residents. Today, this includes women. Modern world, modern people, but when it comes to festival time, you're in an Edo period. It's beautiful. And you see the magic numbers in process. Now, this, as I say, this was a San Jamatsuri at the Sensoji Temple. And uh, they have also in here, I did, it's not part of the lecture, I just by accident a little piece here. They also, on a, in, a, in the Shinto shrine, there's a particular stage for Shinto theatricals. And they have a thing called Sato Kagura. And they do plays, pantomime plays, that are all based on the Kojiki. The dragon who kills uh, women and uh, the, the uh, fights between various gods. 
This is what I want to do. This is Matsuri Bayashi. And the teacher in the middle is my teacher. Arasaksa, the original entertainment district of Tokyo. It is a rainy day in May, during a special event called the Sanji Matsuri. This is the beginning of the Shinto Festival, and the guides are entertained to come rain or shine. The stage can be used for Kagura dance as well as for Matsuri Bayashi. that the fingers are not on the hole. It's the center part of the fingers on the hole. And so you can, you can half hole for those of you who are musical. To keep the line fed, pain sound occurs. The five musicians play a fixed set of five pieces. Here is an excerpt from Five musicians, five pieces. Yattai, Shodan, Kamakura, Shichomi, Yattai. Take a break, Yattai, Shodan, they do the same five. And here they are. One piece called Shichomi. The title means Fourth Avenue. It must be a very lively place. It's not improvised. They're playing a given piece. It has a name, but no music. Right? No music. There's no music. But we, thanks to the Center for Japanese Studies, we had in here, in Burton Tower, a Japanese room where we played Matsuri Bayashi. We also played Nagota in Shamisen music. We had many things going, but I, I studied it with that band who you saw in the film. I studied Matsuri Bayashi. Now, how did you do it? You go to his house, Japanese room, you sit there Japanese style, at a Japanese table, he's on the other side. And he has two little fans which are, have a, are covered, and he does a, a gesture and you imitate. Automato poetically. So, you're over there, I'm over here. Okay? I did the whole repertory with no notation, only mnemonics. For, for those who are graduate students, automato poetic mnemonics, right? It's like this 10, 10. Now, let's see. Why, well, anybody? I didn't have an instrument. He had, he had no instrument. I learned the entire repertory with never playing an instrument. That's, so I, when I came home, I got the Center for Japanese Studies to buy the instruments so I could play it. <laughs> so it goes like this. Get out your stick. 
10, 10, okay? 10, 10, okay, a little further. 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. Right, oh, 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. I don't hear you. <laughs> One, 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. You're getting this into your mind, into your body, so you don't forget it. Okay. Right? <laughs> Here's a former member who played in the group, and once you got it there, you always know it. So try again. 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. Okay. Again. 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. Screw 10, 10, screw 10, 10. Screw 10, 10, screw 10, 10. From the top, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. Screw 10, 10, screw 10, 10. One more time. 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. Screw 10, 10, screw 10, 10. Okay? And you'll never forget it. Right? What did you learn over here? Oh, my. 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 Oh, we did it here at Michigan for, from 1962 to 1994. When 94 came, we had ended end the tradition, right? So this is our last performance. But the only one, and the section you have at the moment is for the lion dance. The, the passage I gave you, the Shishimai, was 10, 10, 10, 10, take a 10. Now, when I turn this on, you'll see there are three people. One of them was who was here. <laughs> uh, and wh how, where's the five? Well, of course, one in, in Japan would be doing the lion, and the other one would be picking up the money. Because <laughs> the lion goes door, door to door, you know. In season, you go to, door to door. Like, like the omikoshi, all go. To a great, uh, what do we call it? Church, canvas. We do a canvas, right? But uh, this, so this is a group, and you see, they're waiting for the lion to show up. So the first part won't, won't be, will not be your path. <laughs> Dancing. And the dance, of course, has in five sections. You've seen two of them. The entrance and being a, and being a cat, right? 
Valerie gets up and goes into the audience, uh, flirts, eats people's programs. The next one comes back on stage, goes to sleep, and then wakes up, and it goes up, and then Then it drops. It dances over. All right. And you had five, you had wonderful numbers. But one thing, we also had wonderful things in music. And we've learned a lot. But this, but this is the end. The end was, it stopped. It's the last performance. So the show's over, the lion's dead. But I'm still alive and 89 years old. Thank you. And you know, of course, who was the lion. Oh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> was this at Rackham? Hmm? At Rackham? Mm hmm. Yep, at Rackham. That's Rackham. Yes. How did you learn to be a lion? Just by watching other lions? No, took a lesson. Okay. Went to a lion. <laughs> the same way I learned the music. I went to the Yamoto of the Wakayama School of Edo Bayashi. See, the, the group we studied, Edo Bayashi, was specifically to Saksa. It's not Kanda Bayashi, that's Kanda. Each part of Tokyo has its own Hayashi. And Edo, Edo Bayashi is the traditional one of Asakusa, and Asakusa is the tradition of old Edo, right? The Yoshiwara was there. Can I follow up on that? Do you have to buy a license like other things, like no, no theater when you perform? Oh, no. You, just, you can just uh, study. Good question. Uh, no. Uh, no, the lion. Uh, well, see, for the lion, uh, actually, um, it was a gift from my, my late wife. When I, we, we, we were together there. And, I, and she bought it for me. For, I said, I'll buy it for you if you learn to do it. <laughs> okay? So I, I went to my, my drum teacher and asked, where can I find somebody who will teach me to do, do a lion? And he gave me a name. And I went to this man. And he never did things before 10 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, I was a academically trained, Sayodigudemaska kind of person. And this guy, Koran, I want to numb that Kotaro. You know, so it was a very different kind of Japanese. But it was summer, it was very hot. It was very hot to be in that lion in summer. But he taught me how to do it. But then, of course, I had imagination. As I say, I learned, I learned to eat po programs on the, in, in Rackham very nicely. <laughs> but, uh, there's, but there's no life. Uh, but one thing, in the Matsuri Bayashi, yeah, you could be part of a guild. And the whole pieces, all the pieces I learned, my teacher finally brought out a uh, recording of it. And it's, I, what he taught me was the beginner's version. If I stayed around long enough, I could learn hikyoku, the secret pieces, and then they really play. So there is a distinction, and you very definitely, and uh, yeah, you, the people that play in there are all part of that guild. So that's, yeah, that, that holds true. Good question. Another question? Oh, please. Are there any other uh, animals aside uh, from the tulip on the uh, parade? Those, uh... Yeah, there are. Yes, I, there, there are lions, dragons. This one is a is a, a standard Omatsuri one, but there are other ones. Yes, uh, you know, there's, there's a pair which has to deal with. A, the two people in the, in the, in the early uh, mythology of, of 
uh, uh, the, of Japan, you know. And uh, they do exist, yeah. But, uh, oh, of course, the dragons, real dragons, uh, and uh, uh, t Tengu. Tengus, yeah. And they're not related to Chinese. Uh, yes, of course they are. Korea. Historically, they are, of course. But they're very Japanese. <laughs> I didn't want, because I, I know it's a long term period, I didn't, didn't put a lot onto the videotape. Do you have another question? Oh. Actually, I have a question, if I may. Um, I, 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 as you said at the beginning, I mean, yeah, 357 are really important. And I think for a lot of us, it's like, oh, yeah, like even without thinking about it, of course it's like Shichigo san or something like this. But can you say a little bit more, maybe, about? Why three? Why five? Why seven? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that concludes my the, question. <laughs> I, have the, I, have, I have in the foggiest. I only know what I see. And when I went to but do that recording at Meiji, that particular piece was totally accidental. I wrote the script. That wasn't in the script. We're just sitting there with a the camera that was going on over here. So we moved over and took it. But when I saw it, I. And of course, the other very important, more magical, you know, more important ceremony that where the person had to be Sasala, that was very different there. And it just, I just caught it. Good question, but, but I'm only a musician. <laughs> it's okay. I, I'll give you an A plus anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. So that instrument that went like this. Say again? Yeah, the bin sensor. What is it made out of? Oh, it's, there's, there's uh, um, plaques of, of uh, wood. Yeah. And uh, no sequence like what we did here? No. Right. But you, you'll see them if you go to eight of our earlier pictures in Japan of ceremonies, you'll see them there. Very common. Very much a part of the tradition. And it almost always one, two, three. You had a question. Uh, yes, how, how would most people come to become festival performers or become take an interest in that music? Is that something that's just uh, part of their... Well, look, those, those, those omikoshi, that's local. Right, right. Uh, every, in the particular district, those, all those omikoshi there were from different parts of Tokyo. Mm. And they all come to that one shrine. There are lots of, they, ah, they came from their own local shrine. Little Shinto shrines are all over. And as I point out to you, even in your house, you can have a, actually in our Japanese music room, we had a, 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 a kamidana, which is a small, uh, sorry, small Shinto thing. And almost any store who wants to have success will have that, or the little, or the little magic gods. Uh, but uh, no. Go, go ahead. What about the music? Because that's a little more specialized. I wonder how people develop uh, an interest in that. How they do it. Well, you see, if you get into the music you, in your local area, mm. you're more part of the operation. It's like it's, it's like a little like joining the choir. Uh, yeah, you're part of the church, you know. You be you're with you're with your colleagues more than once a day, once a year well, once a day, uh, week, and you do things with people. I think it's I think it's social, yeah. and certainly doing the omikoshi, mm. that is a whole. All those people crashed in there like that. If you've never seen that, I kept that one, a long part of that in this tape I did because people if you've never seen it before, it's useful to see it. I don't recommend you being a cameraman doing it. I was not the cameraman, by the way. I was not the, the professional cameraman did the work. But that was, the one fascinating thing was, is that I couldn't quite show it to you at this angle, but in that, as the text has said, there are people who do it for, for a profession. They go around Tokyo, no, they go around Japan <laughs> doing it. They're all, you know, what's the word for it? They're all tattooed and all in the tradition. 
I often see them in the old, in the old foot all in Tokyo. Yeah. How are they funded? Say again? How are they funded? I mean, do they make money by you doing this? Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do. But you see, most of the people are just people from the, from the particular area. But, but there was only one in the film. But yeah, they're paid by the, by the local uh, shrine owners. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, Mom Sensei. Hisajiburi. Good, Good to see you. Uh, so you talked about uh, that you studied specifically Edobayashi yeah. in Asakusa and that different districts have their own version of the right. music. I'm wondering yeah. how uh, musically distinct they are. If you went to Kanda, could you hear the difference from the Edobayashi? How, how different are the different styles? The pattern will be different. Well, I taught you Edobayashi. Uh, See, in this context, you have all the very popular now thing of Japanese drumming. It's all the rage now, right? It's one here in town, I think, isn't there? Yeah. And, but when you hear that music, it's very different. Because it's, it's, it has as its base the tradition of the festival music you're listening to, but it's, it's Western style. If you, if you listen carefully to uh, the group, you know, they tend to say, question, they tend to do bum bum ba 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 kind of like a course of music, you know, and sing back and forth. Or, or just having a steady, steady beat and then go on from that, play other things. But it's, it's, it's uh, this stuff you hear is old Edo. And uh, each area, oh yeah, I, you can't, oh, it's, it's a little like no drama. You, you, you can't play in another group because your pattern's wrong. So it's the same repertoire, but like slightly different ways? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, same, the repertoire, the basic five pieces is pretty well all of them. But then they, oh, that, that's the other point. You're talking about the beginning, about learning, you see. I learned to do all five pieces. I was young then. <laughs> uh, and. Um, and I came home, taught it, and I got a record of him playing. I finally had a record of my teacher playing. And he wasn't playing what he taught me. <laughs> he had taught me the beginning part. No, really. He taught me the beginning part, and I can't learn the other one until I've been in the clan for a while. Very, very interesting. And it's very common. And they say that I do hikyoku, it's a secret piece. It's, just written. it's so funny because it says hikyoku. Well, what secret you got to say in there? It's, but it is. So you don't learn it until you're ready. To, you're accepted to do it. It's a very good point. Okay. I have, I, could I ask one more question? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> so I was also very curious. Um, so I, I was trained as a pianist first, and then I started to learn shamisen, and it drove me insane trying to make the transition from Western music to the chord progressions and the melodic progressions and such in Japanese music. So I'm wondering, maybe if you could talk a little bit more about the actual experience of learning. Because I know that you were a pianist also. I saw that you played at Perry Mansfield. Um, yeah. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the experience of learning a completely different style of music. Well, that's the reason I went into ethnomusicology, because I was very well trained in Western music, and I was very trained in Western music theory. But when I heard uh, other music, particularly in Japan, it didn't make any sense. It didn't follow the rules. So I realized I was listening with the wrong ear. Uh, the, okay, this, that's a different lecture. I'll, I'll, <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you can have it any time. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, this fundamental difference between Western and non-Western music is chords. Chords. Put that on a piano here. No. Okay. So Western music always has a harmonic orientation. Indian music, Japanese music, does not have that. They ain't got no chords. They don't need them. 
Sure, they got a few, you got, sang, you got all kinds of pianos, but that's not Western music. I'm talking about historically, their music was basically lines and, ry and rhythm. And the kind of patterns you learn have another more, all kinds of subtle things, the, their relation to, to the lines above them. But the harmony does not get in the way. But you see, the trouble is that all music is sonic. And when you, and, 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 uh, all, it's sound, right? And uh, you listen to it, and you follow it by knowing conventions. Conventions and anticipation. For example, I don't have a chord here, but if I, if I just play the bass line, you'll have to fill in the rest. Bomb, 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 bomb. Bomb, right? You, 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 and you presume that's going to happen. Now, it's Mozart, and we go bomb, 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 bomb. Goes to a different key. But you are listening, you don't know it. The same way you, you, you listen, and now when you hear the Japanese music, you, you learn a pattern. You learn a pattern, and the pattern will lead to another pattern. And a person here who's been playing for years, if you play a pattern, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I go on a drum, tsuku, 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 yo, it's a whole pattern, tsuku, tsuku, tsuku. I know it's connected to me, tsuku, 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 yo, ho, ho. I know that. It's just the way you know the bomb, 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 should go to that. And in Japanese music, the pattern, leads to another pattern. There's one book, actually, on, in no drama, which shows how to play a dr drum. It has a chart showing how things go. And the first time I saw that, I couldn't believe it. It looked exactly like a, a chart for chords. Just the same routine. With a common chord, you could go to another key. And here it was in Japanese drums. And that's been the joy of working with a different music. Is equally logical, but different. And I hope you have a chance to do it too. Yeah, don't worry.